What time is it? Fight! Welcome to the MMA Podcast. So welcome to another edition of the Martial Arts Chats podcast and on today's show we've finally got him, Kieran the Hater Malone and Kieran thank you very much for, for giving us your time today sir. No problems, I'm happy to be on, happy to be on. Is it still the Hater by the way? I've heard some rumours that there was a name change coming about, if not already, are we still, are we still going with the mantra of the Hater? To be honest I, I end up having like a million different nicknames, I just <laughs> come, up with like, come up with gimmicks for myself and it seems to stick. It could be the what some days it can be the hater, the businessman, the big Russian. Just depends. <laughs> depends what day you catch me on. Fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure to finally have you on. Uh, but I guess we'll we'll have to start off and maybe a minor note for your for yourself and, and for an interview. Let's kind of meet it head on. It was your most recent contest, and you lost to to Jason Coolidge. Some uh, some controversies in both fights, sir. Um, obviously, uh, with uh, the you know the, the fence grabbing and, and then and then later the the, the shots to the back of the head. Um, left you with some issues. Um, if I can ask you, just to sort of cast your mind back and and uh, give us your thoughts on on what was going on. Well, so the the coolest fight was a bad start. As soon as uh, the unprofessional bigger that turned up six kilos overweight, which kind of didn't set the the weekend off to a good start. No, no. But me being me, not able to turn down a fight and probably not uh, doing what's best for me, I took the fight anyway. So you turned up six kilos overweight. I don't know if you've seen the fight, but the first round was pretty close. Yep. He was probably tr- he was probably trying to push the wrestling more than me, to be honest. Uh, se- start of the second round, I came out, he caught a high kick, took me down, I popped back up. I went to take him down, and then before the before the finishing sequence, a couple of times there in the fight, you can actually see him grabbing onto the fence as well. Yep. So three or four times during the fight, he's held onto the fence, and then for the finishing sequence... I went to finish a takedown. He's grabbed the fence to pull him back up from getting taken down, which has helped him jump on the Kimura for that one. So that was a bit annoying. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, you, you, you've been frustrated, especially when you're, you're seeing these things back and, and sort of shady business is going down. How, how did you feel after the contest and, and what was your mindset? Where was your, your frame of mind um, once, you, once you sort of seen these these uh, shenanigans back? Uh, I was pretty annoyed because it, when, I was in, when I was in the fight as well, like... I, you, you can't really miss weight by six kilos and like not mean it. Bad maybe for he'd like mess up, up mess up his wall loading or something. But in the fight, I, like he felt pretty strong, and big. Mm-hmm. So I just started to get the impression he he didn't even really try and make weight at all. He maybe just used to get a, a bit of an advantage during the contest, just having a a little bit more size, having me like boil down, deplete myself, like because it's not an easy cut for me to get a lightweight, and he just yes. didn't bother, which made it hard. Then 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 the fence grabs the didn't really help the situation as well because I, I think like either the fence grabs turned the fight a little bit as well. And if you could just sort of confront, like you were saying there, the, the the shots to the back of the head and things. Um, what what was going on there? What, what was what was the story? Oh, this is a, this is a, this is another one. I've not had the the best luck this year. I'll be uh, fires pulling out on the night yep. day before the show. People missing weight, grabbing the cage. I was fighting at uh, Jordan Miller down in Bournemouth. Tough guys had like. Uh, 30, 40 fights, good fighter for, for like Andre Winner and stuff. Yes. I was down fighting him, do- dominating the fight. I think it was the f- only lasted about two minutes, but came out, landed a couple of strikes, got the takedown, h- hammering him to the ground. He had, kind of, he had nothing for me, really, to be honest. Yep. And then there was, just, there was kind of a weird scramble where, like, he's not reacted the way I'd expect him to react. He kind of backwards, rolled out a, backwards rolled out of position. Mm-hmm. And then we've both kind of came out in a scrambling position. And as I've been coming out, he's like landed like, one shot in the like towards the back of my on the back of my head, but towards my neck as well. Yes. So as soon as he, he hit me with that shot, I was I was pretty much uh, like paralyzed. I couldn't move. As soon as he hit me, wow! Like it was that it was that my whole body had seized up because the shot like the worst thing was the shots weren't that hard. I could just I just couldn't move. Mm-hmm. And then he continued to punch me in the back of the head, in the back of the neck, and cut due. It was on his show, so I'm assuming that's why the referee may not have been as good. And then obviously. Uh, the referee stopped it because I couldn't move. Even after the fight, I was having a, a real bit of trouble with my neck. I couldn't move. Yeah, yeah. The, par- the, the paramedics were actually concerned at one point. They thought I'd maybe broke my neck because what they'd seen, they said it was uh, 
didn't look very good. And even kind of, what is it, two months on, I'm still getting neck issues due to it. Wow. And so what what have you, um, what's your plan going forward for that? You know, we saw you take to social media, potentially announcing a retirement, Kieran. Is that still the case? Or, or is it simply just to get some time away, you know, a bit of R&R time and, and, and regroup and, and that kind of thing? Uh, I think I was just really pissed off at the time, so I said, <coughs> this year's not been the best. Started yeah. off really well. <laughs> yeah. right, right, uh, rattled off a few good wins back to back and then, I had to say, fighters pulling out on the night, people missing weight, people pulling out the day before the show, me dieting down, getting right down on weight, and then people pulling out, and then also the last couple of fights, uh, some unfortunate stuff's happened, and it's it's usually not like me to moan about stuff left, but mm-hmm. I, I kind of started to get to me a wee bit, so I was, I was contemplating not fighting again, but after I cooled down, I like competing too much. Yeah, in fact, if I remember rightly, I think the next day, in fact, on social media, you were sort of, uh, sort of probing potential second thoughts, um, whether your decision was knee jerk or not. And I guess, like you said, the professional fighter, you're a long time wrestler and coach. These decisions, you know, they, they can't really be, be, be that easy for you, I guess, right? I will, I'm, I'm in the gym every day, so it's hard. Yeah. And then, as soon as you start training again, you, you feel, you feel training. You get the itch. Well. Like, yeah. You just want to start competing again. <laughs> Absolutely. So many guys in the gym fighting, it's hard not to. Yeah, definitely. But, but let's move on a wee bit more to your, your coaching role uh, for, for the time being, Kieran. You, you, know, you have your duties with the Dinky Ninjas at the Grip House uh, and obviously high-level martial arts. Uh, for those that don't know, Ke- uh, Kieran's been coaching uh, something he's been involved in since he's... Uh, it's been a very young age for you, hasn't it? Yeah, Yeah, well, pretty much like uh, one of the first times I went to the Grip House, uh, it was to train. I ended up actually taking the wrestling class. Wow. Paul kind of put... <laughs> Paul kind of put me in the spot. I was only like 16 or 17. He's like, oh, you'd be as well taking this class then. And he's like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, may as well. Good a time as any to start and just kind of get thrust into it. Yeah, 16 years old. I mean, I guess you've got to be um, have the mindset of a, a much more mature man than, than, than a kid of 16. That coaching at that age, and uh, that, that, must have been, that must have been exciting times for you, right? It was. Well, there's one thing I'm not lacking, it's confidence, so... Absolutely, I just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> Absolutely, so and is it still something you, you're enthused about and, and you enjoy to this day coaching? Oh, like I love coaching. Like it's pretty much. Yeah, I'm actually trying to expand and do more and more coaching at the minute as well. Especially mm-hmm. like I really want to start okay, expanding wrestling in Scotland because right now we've probably only got like maybe forty or fifty people that actually can, mm-hmm. like, compete who are actively involved in just like freestyle wrestling in Scotland. So yes, I've got a few plans to try and grow that sport and hopefully kind of bring it to a more mass public. Can you expand on that a wee bit? What, what kind of plans are we talking about here? Uh, just different ways to make the sport kind of more, more commercial and get its awareness out there so we can get mm-hmm. a lot more kids into the sport via just like maybe starting like different programmes or getting r- wrestling events. At yeah. Just stuff where we can get more kind of media spotlight on it just to just to continually try and grow it. Absolutely, I think it would definitely benefit from exposure. In terms of today's grappling, particularly in the world of MMA, um, uh, what are your thoughts and your opinions on the standards, you know, what we see maybe um, in the UFC, for example? Uh, you know, Kieran, I'm a guy that comes from the sort of Taekwondo world and things like wrestling, as ignorant as it may sound, forgive me if it does sound ignorant, but, you know, things like uh, wrestling's maybe meant for the Olympics, you know, get a guy on his back and pin him, or uh, we were speaking prior to the show, maybe WWE, you know, learning to take a bump, that kind of thing. So, so I guess what I'm asking is... I, I, an uneducated gentleman such as myself, you know, who, who could you tell me uh, who would be someone who typifies a world class wrestler, particularly in MMA? Who are the, some of the names that comes to Kieran Malone's mind? That's, that's, that's a very controversial subject since Joe Rogan seems to name anyone with a, <laughs> a, a world class wrestler. Uh, prim, like, a lot of these guys that wrestled, in, like they'll say, who are MCW wrestlers who wrestled in college are, are very good wrestlers, mm-hmm. but I'd, I'd, I'd stop way short of calling them world class. Like the, the guys you're looking at calling kind of world class wrestlers, convert to MMA, or people like Daniel Cormier, obviously, who's yes. went to went to two Olympic Games, has competed very well at the World Championships and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Even guys like Ben Askren again went to the Olympics, competed at a really high level. More people like that I would tend to say are world class. The world class wrestler tag seems to get thrown about right. far too much. Mm-hmm. And just touching more on the Olympics, I mean, we had the, the IOC. They, they announced uh, that they were removing wrestling. Uh, and then very very quickly backtracked when they, we had the uh, the bring back wrestling campaign. It was, it was reinstated for twenty twenty. Uh, someone uh, yourself, you competed around Europe and at a high level involved in wrestling, like you said since childhood. What did you make of all that? Uh, no doubt happy that to have wrestling back in the Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, I as soon as they kicked out, like 
I never thought it would actually the decision would stay. But mm-hmm. in a way, it was good for wrestling because it was smartened up on a lot of things. Yes, the social media, the social media seems to be a lot better. They seem yeah. to have like bigger production values for the the big tournaments now. And just mm-hmm. again, instead of keeping the sport stale, they're actually trying to make it move with the times. Yeah, so I felt as if they were stuck in the Stone Age. Yes, yeah, so. a little bit there. So they've ch- they've changed the rules up and they're, they're, they're making lot and they're continuing to make. Lots of good improvements, which will probably be better for the sport in the long run. So it was probably a good scare to have. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Bring it up to date, and like you say, get exposure for it in the in the sort of modern world. But let's move on to another subject that I, I sort of alluded to earlier. Uh, I know it was very much part of my childhood, my teens. Uh, I drop in and out now and then, but as a man who's much more clued up than I am, uh, WWE or WWF, as I'd called it, sort of many years. But but, Kieran, you, you're a big fan, right? Massive fan. I was actually at a local pro wrestling show on Sunday night. As well. oh, where was that? What was that? What was the show? It's just ICW. ICW, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was good. So I can remember going to like a an ICW show maybe five, six years ago at yeah. Apollo 23 where there was probably only 100 people there. Uh-huh. It was good to see 4,000 people there. The wow. SCC supporting but, some grassroots wrestling. Absolutely. Who were some of your favourites growing up? Did, did, you, were, you were probably an attitude there, a guy like myself, yeah? I, I, I was a big Bret Hart man. He was the only Bret, person. The hit me. man, Bret Hart. I, and I'd imagine when someone legit probably shows up in WWE, that must get you excited. You know, like a Kurt Angle or Brock Lesnar. Um, yeah, you, you, you must love seeing that, right? It's always good to have uh, kind of some some real wrestlers in it. Because even when we were at that show at the weekend, uh, my girlfriend was joking like I'd never let you go and do that. And I'm like, that's my dream. <laughs> we see the guys down at the grip house. Um, obviously, they've got the leotard days and stuff like that. And uh, it's, it's a nice little, little throwback. Uh, it's bit, not just the wrestling, but to, to pro wrestling as well. Uh, but let's just move back to mixed martial arts just for a second. You know, the, the UFC, they've, they've signed um, former pro wrestler CM Punk, a.k.a. Phil Brooks. What's your thoughts on this? And, and how do you think he'll, he'll fare in his uh, debut in this mixed martial arts adventure? Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying he's probably my favourite pro wrestler of kind of recent times. Yes, uh-huh. he's, he's kind of more of more of the ilk of Bret Hart. Really good, good promos and stuff as Absolutely, well. Absolutely. Yep. However, he's going to get. He's he's not a fighter, is he? He, he shouldn't be fighting the UFC. He's going to get hammered. It'll be interesting to see, and, and certainly who who they have him matched up against. But yeah, I take your point. You know, his records are zero and zero, and and we really don't know what he's been doing uh, for this. Like since. Even just like obviously, obviously he's been training hard, training with some good people. Sure. He seems as if kind of he's got that attitude where like he'll determine to succeed, but you can't just turn to a sport at like thirty five or whatever age is and mm-hmm. kind of expect to come in at the top level. Like he's he's going to be a jobber, a jobber, a jobber in the real world. Yeah, you could be right. I have to say it's probably yeah. befitting that that we have the hater on today's show because the amount of hate that I'm going to receive talking WWE as opposed to martial arts, I'll probably flood the comment section. But anyway, uh, Kieran, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, sir. Uh, I look forward to uh, your return, if that's the case, for, for your mixed martial arts world. I really hope it is. Many thanks uh, again I'll, for giving us your time, sir. Don't you worry. We we'll look- next year. Excellent, sir. We certainly look forward to having you back. Thanks very much again for giving us your time on, on the Martial Arts Chat Podcast, sir. Catch you after. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, sir. Well, there he is, Kieran the Hater Malone. A pleasure to finally have him on the show. Some bits of controversy in there with some interesting talking points to all good, of course. And a nice change to get some wrestling discussion on the podcast. Thanks again to Kieran for his time. Thanks for listening and tuning in to Martial Arts Chat on Spreaker and on YouTube. Next time on the show will be another MMA roundtable where the panel will help us look back at 2015 as year, giving us their picks for fighter and for fight of the year as well. We'll also be joined by our special guest Sean Sheehan of Severe MMA and he'll help us discuss the phenomenon that is Irish MMA. So thanks again for listening and tuning in to our channel here at Spreaker for the Martial Arts Chat podcast. Like us on Facebook and on Twitter as well.